I'm sure you all will be super excited to see story problems on my paper. Don't freak out, we're doing um, some word problems with function notation. So like I said, that idea of words happening in problem is not going to go away. The one thing we're reminding ourselves, right, is that we're gonna try something, it's okay to make some mistakes, it's okay to not be perfect every single time, right? But we're not gonna leave them blank, we're gonna at least try something. And basically our objective today is sort of to like develop what an equation would look like, except instead of it being an equation to solve for x and just get an answer to a story problem, it's a function rule that's gonna give us the answer to every situation. So for example, if we look at number one, the total cost C for P pounds of copper if each pound is 357. Right, we know that it's going to cost a certain amount if we get one pound, if we get two pounds, if we get three pounds, if we get 10 pounds, if we get 100 pounds. But if we wrote those all down in a table, we'd be listing for forever. So how can we hold all of those values into one equation, one function rule? And the biggest piece here is just making sure we get our variables right. Okay, so if each pound is 357, Right, this tells us total, so we know we're taking some stuff and we're setting it equal to a total where the total is C. I just happen to be writing the total flipped around. Okay, now normally for total we'd do a blank and then add another blank to it, but I don't have anything else here to add, so 357 is my only one to fill in. And then it's 357 per pound. Whenever is something happening per our variable, right, we, we give it the variable. So this is going to get P. So it's using that exact same type of statement we had with a total story problem, right? So if you read, wrote red total and wrote down blank plus blank equals blank, our total is C, 357. We just don't happen to have anything else to put here. And our P is our variable, right? That's the exact same thing that we got here. So let's look at another one, the second one. The total amount T, so we know we're total, we're adding some stuff up and we're setting it equal to T. So things that we need to add up. Of money you and your friend have, right? So we need some money for you and some money for your friend. Okay, if your friend's amount is two more than the amount X you receive. So it's telling us the amount that we receive is X, right, and it's total, so we're adding to it. And our friend makes $2 more than us. So we can't just say that our friend makes $2, right? Our friend doesn't just make $2. Our friend makes the same amount that we make. So how much did we make? We made X. And then they make two more dollars on top of that, right? So I make five dollars, my friend makes five plus two dollars or makes seven dollars, right? If I made ten dollars, my friend makes ten plus two, which would be twelve dollars, okay? So you are X, your friend is X plus two. So if I then want to talk about what that looks like as a function, I can do my x plus my x, which gives me a 2x plus 2. So the total amount is 2x plus 2. Okay, number three, the load L in pounds of a wheelbarrow. So the amount, the load that it can carry, so this would be the total amount a wheelbarrow can carry, is, is it equal, the sum, which tells us to add, of its own 42 pound weight and the weight of the bricks that it carries. Okay, so we need the weight of the wheelbarrow plus the weight of the bricks. So it tells us the weight of the wheelbarrow is 42 pounds. It then tells us that the wheelbarrow holds N four pound bricks. Okay, so it's four pounds per brick. So it's four pounds and then it's happening per brick, which is N, right? When anything's happening per item, it gets the variable. We're gonna set that equal to the total it can carry, which is L. Again, there's nothing to solve, there's nothing else to do. We're just simply saying, how much is that wheelbarrow carrying? 
if we were to have 10 bricks, if we were to have 20 bricks, if we were to have 100 bricks, right? What would be the weight of what is in the wheelbarrow? Okay, a kennel charges $15 per day to board dogs. Upon arrival, each dog must have a flea bath that costs $12. Write a function rule for the total cost for N days of boarding plus a bath. Okay, so we're talking about the total amount that it would cost. So we're gonna add some stuff up. Okay, for boarding plus a bath. So boarding is 15. A flea bath is 12. Now anything that's happening per item gets the variable. So N days, it's telling us it's N amount of days. So anything that's happening per day. So the $12 is just per bath. The $15 is per day. Now unlike all these problems up here, this one doesn't give us what to set it equal to. So we're just gonna sort of use this as a generic. It's a function of n. So I'm just writing this now in function notation instead of a function rule. Now once we have something and we've written a function rule from it or function notation, right, we can then calculate some things. So how much does it cost for a 10-day stay? So if someone says, okay, now that I know this, how much will it cost for me to stay 10 days? Well, we'll just evaluate this function for 10. So we'll do 15 times 10 plus 12, right? Which would be 150 plus 12. We'd get $162. Okay, does a five day stay cost half as much as a 10 day stay? Okay, well we just calculated that a 10 day stay was $162, so half of that would be 81. So if we calculate a five day stay, right, that'd be F of five. So we'll do 15 times five plus 12, which gives us 87. Okay, so in this situation, no it's not. And the reason being is because that $12 isn't happening per day.